Hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I'm Jody Collier. And I'm Andrew Carden. Today we're doing a little stick welding. This is a super common test. It's a 3G position AWS D1.1 limited thickness test. The fixture you see here is from Triangle Engineering, as well as the stand and the test plates. But this little holding clamp here will keep the plate straight, as well as provide multiple ground points. And it really does help as far as arc blow goes. Usually on a small test like this, by the time you get to the end of the route, you're experiencing some pretty serious arc blow. It really helps. We're going to set it at the low end of the range for 532-7018, 70, but the arc force will be set to 10. Arc force is a feature that senses your arc length, and when you get a tight arc length, your voltage drops and it'll bump the amperage up. The reason we're using 532 electrode for this video is not because that's the best choice. It's just what some people are being required to do, and I've gotten some requests for this video. I would choose a 1 8 all the way out personally. Some people would even choose a 332 for the root pass, but it's just a personal preference thing. I would recommend anybody get a hold of the Lincoln Consumable Catalog. Whether you're using Lincoln products or not, there's a lot of good data in there, and that's where we found the amperage range for a 532 7018 actually weren't using Lincoln uh, electrodes for this video. I just bought 10 pounds off Amazon because I never need 532, 7018. I didn't want to buy that many. So Andrew is using a little upside down V technique, but then switches gears here to just using a sort of a circular thing going counterclockwise there. I noticed while I was watching him do this, he switched this up two or three times and didn't really seem to make a difference in the way it looked in the end. Both techniques work. It does seem to help kind of flatten the bead out to work it a little bit like this. But you really want to accomplish those. You want to burn in all the way to the backing strap and burn all the way through those corners there to where when, when you're doing a bend test or whatever, you're not going to have any, any inclusions, any undercut, anything like that. Got to make a restart here. Starting ahead of the crater by about an inch and coming back down in there and then just working it and welding back over top of any arc strikes that are left. Got to really be careful on arc strikes on any welding test. It's grounds for failure if you have an arc strike outside of the weld zone. So you always want to make your arc strikes where you weld back over them. All right, root pass went in pretty good. Just slightly convex, nothing, nothing too drastic. It's going to be easy enough to penetrate on those toes for the next two beads. And the next two beads are going to go in really quick because the goal here is not to fill it too much. And the reason we're doing stringers here is because sometimes stringers are mandated. I would prefer to do a weave personally as far as just passing a test, but that's, that's not part of the procedure sometimes. Sometimes weaves are not allowed and there's a limit on how, how wide you can weave and sometimes it's only three or four times the electrode diameter. So that, that, that bead went in there pretty quick didn't deposit a whole lot of metal, and it left a nice little valley here. No, not going to be hard to penetrate in there. You always got to plan one bead ahead on multi-pass welds and groove welds like this so that you don't pinch yourself off and leave a really deep valley. And that's going to be really easy to burn into right there. Now this one going a little bit slower because we left that little valley there. And the goal here is to leave a little bit of that edge of the bevel, leave, try to leave the straight line, so that you can make a, a nice straight bead on the cover pass. And so here Andrew is just doing just a slight oscillation back and forth, keeping an eye on the right hand side of that bead and trying to come over far enough on the left side to not leave any valleys or low places. So we're slightly below flush here, actually in really good, really good shape for the cover pass because the 532 is going to put down a pretty heavy bead and a lot of times you're dealing with a 1 8 maximum cover pass height so it's best to be a little bit low for the cover pass. All right, that's the first pass in there. And the second pass now, Andrew is really watching the right-hand side there to not leave any undercut. And on the left side of the bead, trying to come as close to halfway on that bead as possible so that it's a fairly smooth transition from bead to bead. If you really watch, it's, it's sort of a little upside down U motion that he's doing here. Trying to keep a fairly close arc. And that arc force being set to 10 allows him to keep a, a tight arc 
without the rod sticking. If you don't have arc force, my best advice, set the rod just hot enough to where the rod won't stick when you hold a tight arc, then hold a tight arc. That holds true for so many things when it comes to 7018 tests. Now for this video, we really didn't let it cool much. It was almost bead after bead after bead. So had to make a stop there a couple inches from the very end on the last bead. You don't want to do that if you don't have to. But we're going to go ahead and let it cool down to about 150 before we run that last couple of inches. If you just camp out on it and never let it cool, you know, you're going to have problems toward the end of these beads like this. Andrew is washing back and forth all the way to the end, filling it all the way up just for the, just for looks, to so make sure it's welded end to end. No inspector wants to see you stop half inch short. Even if they're discarding the ends, they don't want to see it. So you want to weld it end to end. All right, a quick, a quick wire brush here shows the cover pass. Not too shabby for 532. Again, the reinforcement or cap height requirement is generally an eighth of an inch for AWS D1.1 tests like this. This is called a VWAC gauge. It'll measure undercut as well as height of cap. And it's in metric, but it's two millimeters. That's 80 thousandths roughly, so well within the one eighth height requirement. Nice work, Andrew. Well, I hope that helps anybody having to take this test with a 532 rod. I also have some videos using a 1 8 rod. I'll link them up here and here. Thanks so much for watching. This video is brought to you by my online store at weldmonger.com. See you next time.